The Assyrian Empire was near its zenith when I began to prophesy. The capital of Assyria, Nineveh, is in modern-day Mosul, Iraq. Yes, Nineveh was the city Jonah had saved through his preachings and their repentance, but that was a century and a half in the past. I hear that you can't work your way to heaven, but if you can work your way to hell, my grandfather surely succeeded. King Manasseh rebuilt altars and Asherah poles that his father had destroyed. He engaged in every kind of worship of false gods that he could think of, and led the people to do the same. He built altars to false gods in the temple of God. He practiced all kinds of sorcery and divination, and even sacrificed his own son in fire. Despite his evil lineage, King Josiah was one of the most righteous kings of Israel's southern kingdom, almost righteous enough to save it from destruction. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet because he could foresee the coming destruction of his beloved Jerusalem and the southern kingdom. My grandfather was so evil that the Bible specifically says he provoked God to anger. He led the people into behavior that was more evil than the people Israel destroyed when they moved into Canaan. He shed so much innocent blood that it filled Jerusalem from end to end. My grandfather was so bad that God promised to bring much retribution on Jerusalem and Judah. So much, they would hurt the ears of anyone who heard about it. My grandfather led the people into evil of such magnitude that God promised to destroy them. And his reign lasted 55 despicable years. My father followed in my grandfather's footsteps. He was assassinated by his officers and this made me king. I was only eight years old. Me? I chose to walk in the ways of the Lord like my great-grandfather, Hezekiah. King Hezekiah. Just. Good. Humble. My grandfather, King Manasseh. Evil, evil, evil. My father, King Ammon, as well. I bucked the going trend. King Hezekiah was who I would aspire to be. The Book of the Law is what you call the first five books of your Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It was all assumed that all the scrolls of the Book of the Law had been destroyed by my grandfather and my father. When I was 26, I pushed for the repair of the Temple of God. I sent a messenger to the high priest with my plan. Hilkiah, the high priest, had found the Book of the Law in the Temple. He sent the copy of the law back with my messenger. I demanded that he immediately read it to me. I heard the words of the Lord. I tore my robe in distress. The anger of the Lord was burning against my people because we were not following his commands. What? I thought. I immediately asked to find out the Lord's will. The priest went straight to the prophetess, Hulda. Yes, a prophetess. She told them that the Lord was going to bring disaster upon the people of Judah because of their disobedience, because of their worshiping other gods. She said that since I had been responsive and had humbled myself, that the disaster would not happen in my lifetime. I wept about this news of my people and their future. Then I remembered something, something my hated enemies the Ninevites had done a century and a half before when Jonah preached to them. They repented, and God did not bring disaster on them as he had promised. I gathered all the elders, priests, prophets, and people of Judah to the temple. I read the words of the Book of the Law to them. It was exciting to hear my words echo and then repeated through the multitudes. I finished, and then I renewed the words of the covenant that was in the law. I agreed to follow the Lord and all his commandments. 
and the people, they pledged to keep the covenant too. On my command, the priests and officials went throughout the land and destroyed all altars, shrines to false gods, and high places where pagan worship took place. We thoroughly cleansed the land and made it clean for the first time since King David. Never before or after me had a king done such a thing. Certainly, my choice to be like my great-grandfather instead of my father and grandfather would pay off. I serve the Lord with all of my heart, soul, and strength as commanded in the law. It was not enough. The Lord's patience had ended. He knew that the land would be defiled soon enough. It would not relent. The sure destruction of Jerusalem and Judah was not to be changed. I heard the words I had hoped I'd never hear. The most heartbreaking words possible for God to say. It is too late. The walls of Nineveh were eight miles long and surrounded an area of nearly three square miles. The palace, gardens, and parks were known worldwide for their luxury and extravagance. The Assyrians dominated nearly the whole region, including Judah. Nineveh was a city of violence, and all the countries it dominated hated it. A few decades before my time, the prophet Nahum began to prophesy against Nineveh. He prophesied that God would judge the city and Judah would eventually prevail over it. He prophesied about its siege, desolation, and its coming doom. Nahum would be proved right, but Nineveh would just be replaced by the Babylonians. About 10 years before me, Zephaniah prophesied about the coming judgment of the Lord against Judah and many other nations. He promised God's judgment, but also promised redemption. Perhaps he was a little optimistic about the lasting effects of the reforms of King Josiah. I started prophesying in the 13th year of the reign of King Josiah and continued my ministry until shortly after the destruction of Judah in 586 BC. My career spanned the last five kings of Judah and a year or so after its fall. You know my writings as the Book of Jeremiah and the Book of Lamentations. The prophet Jonah, without even wanting to, got the entire city of Nineveh to repent and change their ways. I preached for 40 years and didn't convert a single person. Maybe that is one reason I was known as the weeping prophet. But God called me to be faithful to him, not to convert people. He even told me that no one would listen to what I had to say, and I would be in pain while giving my messages and people would try to kill me. No wonder I never had a happy day in my life. Reading my messages today, it may seem like the ravings of a demented prophet. I go on and on and on, but to the people of my day, the ravings were abundantly clear, but not welcome. Let me try to simplify my message in the book of Jeremiah for you. I called for my people to turn their hearts to God. I told them that if they would repent with sincerity, God would exchange their hard hearts for hearts that yearn to please Him. Without this change of heart, it would be impossible to please God. As their hearts changed, they needed to repent of their deeds and change their ways. Their disobedience stemmed from their worship of false gods. They absolutely had to quit worshiping false gods and turn back to the one true God. As their hearts changed and their worship turned to God, they needed to change their evil ways. They had to quit acting like the evil nations around them and act like God's people. All of those admonitions led to this conclusion. If they didn't change their hearts and actions, God was surely going to destroy Judah and the other evil nations. The people would forfeit their right to have God's protection. God didn't want to destroy Judah. He yearned for them to turn back to him. He wanted it so badly that human words cannot describe it. 
My heart hurt desperately for my people and for God. When I was talking to God, I defended my people, and when I spoke to my people, I defended God. For 40 years, my heart broke as they refused to turn to God and obey Him. They had been so accustomed to God's patience, they had no sense of urgency about repenting. I knew it was the time of emergency. They were an instant away from a cataclysmic disaster. And apparently so was I. They threw me in a well. The people and officials were so tired of me, they threw me in a well to die of starvation. Fortunately for me, an Ethiopian eunuch saved my life. I was not the only prophet sounding the emergency alarm. God revealed events to the prophet Habakkuk. He declared the Babylonians would be used to end the existence of Judah. Habakkuk's communication with God revolved around God's justice and patience and his use of the Babylonians. Habakkuk knew that the evil behavior of his people would end in their destruction. The prophet Ezekiel's basic message was the same as Habakkuk's in mine, but also included encouragement for the people while in captivity of the Babylonians. Ezekiel started his ministry before Judah ended and extended for many years afterward. He had a flair for drama and a very high pain threshold. For instance, as a symbol of bearing the people's sins, he laid on his left side for 390 days, then his right side for 40 days. Since the people of the southern kingdom chose to ignore me and the rest of God's prophets, Judah was destroyed. Its people deported to Babylon in 586 BC. My lament over the city of Jerusalem is the Book of Lamentations. The city that was once God's city was deserted by God. The temple that was once God's home was destroyed and defiled. The people that were once God's people were hauled off to a foreign land as slaves. The kingdom of David meant to be everlasting. It, it came to an end. As far as we knew, the Jews would be assimilated by the Babylonians. The people had broken their covenant with God, and it appeared God had ended their existence. My heart was broken. I wept an ocean of tears. I was sure the Jews, as a people, would disappear forever.